The general staff confirmed the defeat on January 6th of the deployment point of the Russian occupation forces in Havrilovka, Sakhand, Kherson region. As reported by Ukraine Forum, the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine announced this on Facebook, publishing operational information as of 1800. Up to 100 wounded servicemen were brought to local hospitals. Information about the eliminated invaders is being clarified, the general staff emphasized. In addition, during the day, Ukrainian aviation struck the area where the Russian occupiers were concentrated. The missile troops and artillery units of the Defense Forces of Ukraine carried out fire damage during the day into areas where the enemy's manpower and military equipment were concentrated, the department informs. At the same time, as noted in the general staff, during the day Russian troops launched one missile strike and carried out 12 attacks from rocket salvo systems, in particular on the civil infrastructure of Donetsk and Dnipropetrovsk regions. The threat of air and missile strikes on Ukraine by the Russian Federation remains. The main efforts of the enemy are focused on attempts to completely capture the Donetsk region within the administrative border. Offensive operations are currently underway in the Bakhmut direction, and the enemy is also unsuccessfully trying to improve the tactical position in the Kupian, Lyman, and Avdiiv directions. During the day, the aviation of the defense forces of Ukraine struck 21 areas of enemy concentration, as well as three strikes on the positions of anti-aircraft missile systems. As reported by Ukraine Forum, the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine announced this on Facebook, publishing operational information as of 1800 on January 7th. The General Staff noted that, despite the announced so-called ceasefire regime, the Russian invaders continue to shell the positions of Ukrainian units with tanks, mortars, and barrel artillery. Along with this, during the day, the enemy carried out an airstrike and launched seven attacks from rocket salvo systems. Meanwhile, the city of Solder, Donetsk region, remains under the control of the armed forces of Ukraine. This was stated by the spokesman of the Eastern Group of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Sarai Cherovity, on the air of the Telethon, the correspondent of Ukraine Form reports. Solder is not under the control of the Russian Federation, Cherovity said. According to him, fierce battles are currently taking place there only today there were 76 shellings and 10 combat clashes. Our armed forces and command are doing everything to inflict maximum damage on the enemy in terms of personnel and equipment, and to preserve their forces as much as possible, said the spokesman of the Eastern Group of Forces. He added that the tactics of the Russians have not changed they use personnel that continuously rolls into the positions of the Ukrainian defenders. Step by step, they got small promotions. Our soldiers are on the defensive, but the tactical situations sometimes force them to change their positions, the spokesman explained. Commenting on the situation in Bakhmut, Cherovity noted that the city remains under the control of the armed forces, and fighting continues. So far, this is one of the most intense areas of the front, where combat clashes and constant shelling by the enemy are ongoing, he said. The spokesman of the Eastern Group of the Armed Forces of the Ukrainian Armed Forces also reported that combat operations are also ongoing in the direction of Svartov Kremina. The enemy regroups, tries to counterattack in certain directions, but suffers significant losses and retreats. The armed forces act based on the situation. Regarding Putin's alleged order to introduce a ceasefire regime from 12 o'clock on January 6th to 2400 on January 7th, Cherovity said, of course, none of this happened. Earlier in propagandist Russian publications, there were reports about the alleged capture of Solder by the enemy. Meanwhile, 
The United States on Friday announced a more than $3 billion aid package for Ukraine that includes 50 Bradleys and dozens of other armored vehicles, as well as artillery pieces and ammunition. It is the largest security assistance package in total value that we have committed so far, U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense Laura Cooper told journalists. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky hailed the new package as timely and strong. It brings total U.S. military assistance since Russia invaded in February 2022 to more than $24.2 billion. Both Washington and Berlin had pledged to provide infantry fighting vehicles for Ukraine the previous day, with Germany saying Friday it would deliver about 40 martyr vehicles within weeks.